you know, when the pastor's voice is weak, the congregation too will be weak. I am strong. Somebody there, I said, I am strong. Tonight is going to be more than one miracle, double miracle, triple miracle, multiple miracle in your life in Jesus' name. If you allow the Lord to have his way by the word, That comes to you by the spirit that comes upon you by the word that flows into your life every chain will be broken all the shackles will be taken away the Lord will be magnified in your life his power will be magnified in your life. And this day will mark a new beginning of the power of God in a multiple way in your life in Jesus' name. If you are there and you expect and you know that God cannot fail and is coming your way right now. Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, tonight you'll have your way in every life. There'll be no hindrance to the flow of the multitude of uh, multiplication of miracles in every life in Jesus' name. And I pray that today you will set everyone free. You will do a great mighty work in every life. We will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Save souls tonight. Restore souls tonight. Bless souls tonight. And heal every sickness that your people are suffering from, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. It's thunderous, amen. And assuring, amen. A mountain moving, amen. It is done. You can sit down. The Lord bless you. I said, The Lord bless you. Tonight, we're talking about multiple miracles through. The divine touch. Divine touch. You will feel it in your life. A touch manifested in your life. A touch that will roll away every problem in Jesus' name. Look at Mark. We're reading Mark chapter 6, chapter 7. Chapter 8. Look at Mark chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 55. Mark 6, verse 55, and ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. Look at verse 56. It says, And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets 
and besought him that they might touch that's the word that they might touch that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment and as many as touched him you'll touch him tonight yeah. your wife will touch him tonight yeah. your husband will touch him tonight yeah. your children will touch him tonight yeah. as many as touched him were made whole i'm looking at you yeah. i rejoice for you yeah. they were made whole what does that mean they were made free all the things that bound them all the sicknesses that oppressed them all the yoke that have eyes they are not free to see they are not free to look the people that have food they are not free to eat the people that have a good house they are not free to live in there there are people that have good beds costly expensive they're not free to sleep there. There are people that have education, certificate. They're not free to use that certificate. There are people that have liberty. They're not free to use that liberty. Freedom, total freedom. Whatever hinders your life, whatever limits your life, whatever stands in the way you have the energy you have the power you have the strength you have the will you have the goal but something always stands in front you are not free to move on tonight everything that hinders your freedom it will take away in jesus name freedom freedom from outward Sins in the plural. You see, sin is like a tree. It has roots, it has branches. And when we say we are saved, what it means is all the branches of sin, they are caught down, but the root is still there. Number one. One, there is freedom from outward external sins. And then there is freedom from inward internal sin, singular, the root of sin. Now, there is also sickness. And tonight, total freedom. Somebody shout, freedom. freedom. Freedom from sin. Outward, inward. Freedom from sickness. There is visible sickness. And when somebody goes to the hospital, and then they bring him before the x-ray or the testing one way or the other, they say, yes. This is what you have. That's what you have. Visible. There are other people that have sickness, invisible sickness. You go here. They say, why did you come? You're all right now. You say, no, I'm not all right. They say, we checked up everything. We looked at everything. You're all right. But you know that you are not all right. Invisible. Visible sickness today, the Lord will take away. Yeah. Invisible sickness today, the Lord will take away. Yeah. That's what we call freedom. 
You know, there are people who are free from sin. They are not free from sickness. It's not complete. It's not total. And when you have freedom from sin, freedom from sickness, you are now about to move on to the destiny that Lord has ordained for you. And the destiny will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. There is freedom from slavery. Slavery. You know, there are people who are slaves to sell. What controls them? What spoils their marriage? What separates them from friends? Sell. They claim to be saved. That's okay. And they're not sick. That's okay. But there is sell. I must have my way. If it doesn't go my way, it will not work. Sell. There are people who lose their families. And the husband says, I can't live with this woman. Sell. And the wife says, the man is too bossy. Sell. Because of that self, they scatter their families. There are people, they have a good job. And they are climbing and climbing and climbing. But they are full of themselves. They are not free from self. And because of that, a good job is lost. Slavery to self, the Lord will deliver you today. Yeah. Other people, they are slaves to substance. What we call substance, sometimes they put it in a tube and they have a needle. And then they are slaves to those things, the substance. It turns their brain. It destroys their health. They want to stop. They cannot stop because of slavery to substance. Tonight, you're free. We're talking about freedom, total freedom. Other people are slaves to Satan. They don't have any control of their own lives. Satan controls them. Evil spirit controls them. Occultism controls them. And anyone here today, we came to celebrate your freedom. You'll be free. Say, I will be free. Slavery to self. Slavery to substance, slavery to Satan, slavery to society. You know, some people, their community oppresses them, captivates them, captures them. They want to do this and that, and society says, what are you trying to do? You want to get up? We tied you down around this tree and you cannot move beyond the length of the rope by with which they tied you tonight that rope will be cut off yeah. and everything now you need if there's freedom from sin and freedom from sickness and freedom from slavery the lord will grant you that total freedom tonight in Jesus' name. Congratulations. Your freedom is very near. Look at chapter 7, verse 37. Mark chapter 7, verse 37. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, he has done all things well. You didn't say amen to that one. Yeah. He has done all things 
well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Impossibilities in your life are cancelled. All those challenges that tied you down, you couldn't move. You have eyes, you can't see, ears, you can't hear, you have mouth, you cannot talk, you have a dream, a vision, and yet you cannot move ahead because of whatever is hindering you. That vision that God Almighty has given will begin to be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Freedom. 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 God grant you total, complete, supernatural freedom in Jesus' name. You know, I've been looking at other people, I mean other evangelists, other preachers, you know, if you're going to do something, you find out those who have done it before you. And as you find out those who have gone before you, you see the challenges they faced. And then as you come and you say, I'm going to succeed, you will succeed. Yeah. Now, the brothers and sisters in Abakaliki, very near here, above your stage, they'll be listening now. We had a crusade in Abakaliki, above your state, capital. And then we waited a little, maybe we waited much. We were waiting for the governor at that time to come. And because of the waiting, we stayed longer than we expected. And as I began to preach, the rain began to fall. And there was one young man there. In the morning of that day, the father died in the village, but he had heard about the crusade in Abakaliki. And then he said, I am going. They said, what kind of son are you? Your father died, everybody is crying, and you say you are going for a crusade. He said, I told God before that I will go to that crusade, and now, Father died in the morning, I will go. And so, he was not a slave to society. They didn't stop him. Nothing will stop you. Yeah. Well, we're in the open. And then I gave the message as if I didn't know that rain was falling. I just took introduction, point one, Point two, point three, and even because it was in the open, rain was falling on my Bible. But I didn't eat mind. I then said, now, if you want to give your life to the Lord, where are you? Raise up your hand. And people raised up their hands. And then I took them, I said, come out here. And then we did counseling, and the rain was falling. And then I said, now, if you are sick, if you have any problem, we're going to pray now, and the Lord will touch you. And then they raised up their hands, and I prayed, and I told them, when you hear the final amen, the miracle is there. Ah. You know, I still remember Abakaliki, amen, was wonderful. Can I tell you that 
as we say the final amen, the father in the village rose up. Freedom. 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 And if that happened in a neighboring state, at that time, Jesus Christ is still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Any sin that is dead in your life will rise up today in Jesus' name. Multiple miracles through the divine touch. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the unfailing power of his divine touch. Unfailing, it will not fail in your life. Number two, the unceasing, unstoppable power. Want you double, double, double touch for you today, yeah. double touch in your life today. The unlimited power of His double touch when it comes upon you. Nothing will stop. The miracle power of God in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one now, let's look at number one. The unfailing power of his divine touch. Look at Mark chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 54. Mark chapter 6. Reading from verse 54, and when they were come out of the sheep, straightway they knew him. They knew him, Jesus. They knew him, Savior. They knew him, Healer. They knew him, Deliverer. As you know him tonight, it will save you. As you know him tonight, it will heal you. As you know him tonight, he will deliver you. You know, the problem of people is that they don't know the difference between Mary, the virgin, and Jesus. They don't know the difference between Peter and Jesus. They don't know the difference between the servants of Christ and Christ. But when you know him and you know that in Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary that in him is your salvation salvation will come to you Amen. you know that in him is your healing healing will come to you Amen. then in verse 55 look at that and they run you know um, when you know that you want to withdraw money from the bank. You look at your time, and the bank is about closing. You will not, if you really need that money, if you really need what you want to get from the bank, you will not be walking so slowly and sluggishly, and then you are not running, and you are not making effort to get there in time. They knew that Jesus came to town, and Jesus is by your side there. He wants to save you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. And then uh, when you hear the call that if you want Jesus to be your savior right now, before the sentence finishes, you are up already. They ran through that whole region, round about, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick, where they heard he was and thank god today you don't even have to run to a, a distant place right there on your phone right there on your desktop 
right there on your laptop and right there where you have the connection. Jesus Christ will appear to you there and the power of God will touch your life in Jesus' name. Somebody from Zambia long ago had HIV AIDS and the doctors that tested him, they told him it's now at the final stage. And so he got all his money together and he said he wanted to travel and come to Lagos, Nigeria so I can pray for him so he will not die. You will not die. So I told him on the phone, you don't have to come. We are connected already. And when I mentioned the name of Jesus here in Nigeria, over there in Zambia, the power of God will touch you. I said, is that so? I said, yes. You can keep your money. Don't spend the money to buy tickets. And then I preach. You know, it's not the place where you pray. It's not the shouting where you pray. It's the name of Jesus. When we mention that name and that name penetrates your ear, your healing will come. Yeah. And so we preach. And I said, go and check up. He went back to the hospital. And then lo and behold, no HIV AIDS. Yeah. Everything vanished away. That's the way it will happen to you tonight. <laughs> well, we are in Namibia. Namibia is southern part of Africa. And those brethren in Namibia will be hearing me now because we are connected also to Namibia tonight. There was this child that had a problem the tongue was out and she could not pull back the tongue and eventually the mother appealed to the government i need money i don't have enough money to do operation for it for this child and the government of namibia the country they offered to pay for the operation and so they booked a doctor in South Africa. And he took the child to South Africa. And as they got there, the doctors examined and they said, we cannot do anything. What can we do? Are we going to cut the tongue? How can we pull the tongue back? They said, please go back home. And so government wanted to help wanted to supply the money, wanted to do the operation. There's nothing they could do. And then we had a crusade at the capital in, in Namibia. The mother contacted our state of Australia over there and said, can you please look Jesus, somebody help me shout Jesus. Jesus. And I said, whatever problem you have, total healing, total deliverance, total freedom in Jesus' name. The mother opened her eyes and looked at the child. For the first time in her life, the tongue was inside. Everything was all right. Freedom. I said freedom. 
all those problems that people could not solve even when the money is there the lord is bringing freedom to you tonight in jesus name Amen. they brought the sick in beds where he was and here you are today christ is here and there you are over there Christ is there. Look at verse 56. In verse 56, it says, And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, that's all. Either a village or a city or a country that describes everywhere, they laid the sick in the streets. And besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him, who is going to touch him tonight? As many as touched him, if they are sinners, the sins are taken away. If they are sick, the sickness is taken away. If it's demonic attack, demonic affliction, the affliction is cut off. As many as touched him were made whole. Were made whole. Did you hear Jesus Christ? The same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still there today. I said it's still there today. His name is as powerful as himself. And then today, as you touch him, I will touch him. I will touch him. There will be the unfailing power of that divine touch in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16 in mark chapter 16 we're looking at verse 15 it says and he said unto them go ye into all the world now you know we don't have to walk there now we can reach all the world right from here and people are hearing and as you hear the power of that divine touch will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. What's gospel? Good news, glad tidings. The good news that your Savior is going to save you tonight. The good news that your healer is going to heal you tonight. The good news your deliverer is going to deliver you tonight. You will go out of this place free. Yeah. Preach the gospel to every creature. Look at verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. After you believe, you are born again, then you have heard. You will come to the designated places because we want to fellowship with you. And from there, you are prepared for water baptism. And he that believeth not shall be damned. That's why I plead passionately that you should receive the Lord into your heart, into your life. Because if you believe not, you'll be damned. I pray you will not be damned. And then, verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe, as you believe in verse 16, and you are saved, and you are born again. Then these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Amen. The devil that he held you captive, you are free tonight in Jesus' name. 
they shall speak with new tongues. All that tongue of cursing your wife, cursing your children, abusing them, insulting them. All that tongue you are driving and then somebody tried to cut in front of you and then you began to curse and you began to use the name of God to curse. All that bad tongue, old tongue will vanish away. All the tongue that you got from, I'm sorry, daddy and mommy. Daddy always told you when you were very young, you're a dog. You'll never do well. You're a dance. You'll never do well. You're like your mother. And now you have grown up and you have your own children. The same tongue that ruined you and wrecked you. You're using the same tongue on your children. Old tongue will pass away from you. A new tongue, a fresh tongue, a good tongue, a profitable tongue, a tongue that brings blessing upon other people, you now speak with new tongues. Verse 18, and they shall take up serpents. What that means is that any serpent that tries to come around you and wind itself like it did for Paul, you will take it and throw it into the fire. All those things walking about in your body, they'll be thrown into the fire tonight in Jesus' name. I'm looking at somebody there. I'm just happy for you that tonight you are free. If they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Nobody will kill you before your time. You are going to live long life. I'm talking to somebody there. You are going to live long life. And all the things that will have cut short your life, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. And they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Somebody there tonight, you recover. You know, when we say recover, it means whatever sickness. I was on an interview in London some years ago. Miracle is when the power of God touches you, you are healed. She said, Ah, I said, Tell, tell me, any sickness, do you have any sickness here in your body? And she, she said, I've been having this for a long time. And remember, we we're on air. We're not supposed to be counseling or praying there, but she wanted to know. Watch is healing. And I didn't see more close my eyes. I said, In Jesus' name, sickness, they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the word of signs following. Sign in your life. Wonder in your life. Healing in your life. Point number two now is the unceasing power of his demanded touch. Look at Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 32. And they bring unto him, you have to bring yourself to him. You have to say, Lord, I am here. You have to say, I am 
waiting for the touch of the Lord, they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand on him. Demanded touch. They demanded from him. They beseeched him and they sought a touch from him. In verse 33, it says, And he took him aside from the multitude. As you are coming to the Lord tonight, the Lord will separate you from the multitude. You're being smoky with the multitude. The Lord will take that cigarette out of your life. It will separate you from the multitude. Yeah. You have been a drunkard during days, drink days. Even some people go to the point of drinking their urine. The Lord will separate you from those who are drinking urine and drinking alcohol in Jesus' name. There are people that go under the cover, the captivity, and the slavery of occultic power. Multitudes. And the Lord will separate you from that multitude tonight. Miracle will come to your life. And he took him aside from the multitude. And he put his fingers into his ears and speech and touched, touched touched his tongue then in verse 34 it says and looking up to heaven he sighed and says unto him Ephasa, that he is be opened that word of the lord he now puts in my mouth you know it's like the microphone and then somebody is talking or singing before that microphone and the microphone takes that a uh, voice and then you are able to hear I come tonight at the microphone of Jesus Christ yeah. he speaks the word and he speaks it through me and I declare to you be opened The blind eyes will open. The deaf ears will open. The closed doors will open. And the chance and opportunity in your life that is locked up by the devil is open tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 35. In verse 35 and straightway, his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spake plain he spake plain you will speak plain your testimony will be clear and when other people hear miracle will also happen to them in jesus name Look at verse 37. Verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished. Seeing he has done all things well. Where? Where? In your life. I said in your life. In your body. In your brain. Tonight. He has done all things well. Impossibility in your life. The Lord will straighten out everything. He has done all things well. There is nothing like the remnant of sin, remnant of sickness, remnant of slavery that will remain in your life. He has done all things well. Yours is the answer solution from heaven tonight in Jesus' name. He has done all things well. And he maketh both the deaf 
to hear and the dumb to speak. Today is your day. This is your time. Isaiah chapter 35. I'm reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 35. Reading from verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. And the ears of the deaf shall be restored. And then in verse 6, it says, then shall the lame man leap as an heart. You leap up even though you have been lame before. You didn't say amen to that. Yeah. Let me go back to Namibia again. We went to Namibia. And uh, Pastor Ibe might be here tonight. He was in Namibia before. And then Pastor Anyasara was there with me. You know him. And we had that crusade. And this girl had been paralyzed for 12 years. Actually, she was born like that. And she was at the age of 12 at that time. And then the people were stretched out, they spread out on the field. And then we prayed. After that prayer, what name did I mention? Jesus. What name am I mentioning tonight? Jesus. And then the people, you ought to be there. You ought to be there, the kind of amen they gave. And when I said, lame person, deaf person, blind person, rise up, receive your miracle in Jesus' name. That's right, that's right. That's the kind of amen they gave that day. And this girl that had been paralyzed from birth up to that age of 12, I didn't touch her. I didn't go to her to shake her up. By herself, she stood up. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me finish. And then she started walking. And then she started running. Twelve year paralyzed. And I remember, you, you know, Pastor Yasodo. Pastor Yasodo ran after her. And they ran before they could calm her down. That's miracle, and that's a miracle will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Today, today. Point number three now, the unlimited power of his double touch. Unlimited power. Praise the Lord, it is yours tonight. The unlimited power of his double touch is in Mark chapter 8, verse 22. Mark chapter 8, verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida. He has come to you. He has come to your town. He has come to your local church. He has come to you as a family. You are there and you are watching on the screen by yourself on your family. He is coming to you right there today. And he cometh to Bethsaida. And they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch, touch, to touch him. That's the divine touch. That's the supernatural touch. Verse 23. In verse 23, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. I told you before, that's what he always does. He takes you out from the midst of sinners. And it says 
he led him out of the town and when he had spit on his eyes we never questioned god why did you do it that way that's the heavenly way that's the miracle way whatever the spirit leads him to do that's what has done and when you don't argue that touch will bring unlimited power in your life and then it says and he put his hands upon him and he asked him if he saw aught verse 24 and he looked up and said i see men as trees walking the first touch did not do everything it's like salvation that you are saved that's the first touch that doesn't solve the whole problem of sin you come back for sanctification and you have the second touch the second benefit and then everything will clear away he said i see men as trees walking look at verse 25 after that he put his hands again 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 double touch upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly every man clearly that clarity that completeness that totality that uniqueness of miracle in your soul in your spirit in your body is coming upon you tonight it will happen heaven is ready Christ is ready it's ready to save you it's ready to forgive you it's ready to wipe all your sins away if he is ready and you are ready salvation will come your healer is ready heaven is ready to heal you that divine touch is ready right now to change the condition of your body if you are also ready your healing will come there will be unfailing power his power will not fail in your life tonight there will be unceasing unstoppable power that power will not fail in your life tonight and will not stop in jesus name there will be the unlimited power whatever the yoke whatever the problem whatever the sin however high or deep forgiveness is coming to you now salvation is coming to you now whosoever you be that man be that one be that boy be that girl whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved 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 and heaven will have a record of you that tonight you are saved it's about and eyes closed your time has come heaven has been waiting for you christ the savior has been waiting for you he said he doesn't want you to remain unsaved he doesn't want the guilt the condemnation the power of sin to still hold you captive he wants to save you now he is ready are you ready are you ready if you are ready for forgiveness you are ready for salvation you are ready for conversion you are ready for him to take you out 
of the multitudes of people who are living in their sins. And you say, Lord, I want that salvation now. It's for me. You died for me. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. Raise up your hand and say, Lord, today is the day of my salvation. Outside, inside, online, in the local church, anywhere you are, any country, salvation is available for you now. Raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, can you stand up? That's right. Wonderful. Wonderful. The wonder of salvation will come in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Online, friend, this is the moment that you have been waiting for. Heaven has been waiting for this, that you this day, you raise up your hand there, wherever you are. Stand up, wherever you are. Any local church, any country you are, rise up there. The Lord, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, he sees you there. And he's going to forgive your sin. Congratulations. Heaven will put your name down. I said heaven will put your name down. And heaven will recognize that as heaven was ready for you, you were ready and forgiveness, compassion, salvation has now come into your life. That's good. Only one person saying amen over there. As you are standing, open your mouth and tell the Lord right there, Lord, I thank you for this day. This is the day of my salvation. You take me out of the crowd and you bring me unto yourself. Lord, I come to you. Tell him, I surrender my life unto you. Tell him, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. Tell him, I believe you are saving me right now. Take all my sins away. Forgive me of all my sins. I accept. I believe. I confess that now I am saved. Be it done in your life in Jesus' name. Keep up your hand. Keep on standing up. I pray for you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. You so loved everyone that you gave your own begotten son to die for everyone on the cross of Calvary. And now, as each individual personally comes to you, you are not going to cast them up. You are not going to reject. Save every one of them now in Jesus' name. Forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of life. New life. New character. New behavior. Christ-likeness. Let it come in every heart, every life, right now, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. The power to save is unfailing. The power to save is unceasing. The power to save is unlimited. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Heaven has registered, recognized you. You are saved in Jesus' name. Keep on standing as we call on our state overseer to come. To direct us, don't sit down, don't sit down. To direct us 
at this time of counseling those online those in local churches anywhere you are our leaders are there and then online look at the screen you see the number to so contact there welcome into the kingdom of god